Men, you are needed in this world. You are needed when the light of the man goes out. This is what you get. And the way that you will become a man again or be a man is when you walk in the light. Not in your imagination, not in anger, but in perfect love. And then the situation you will be able to handle perfectly. A situation is not there to break you, it's there to make you. But you got to walk in the light. You must forgive mama and return to the father. God in Christ, Christ in men, man over woman, and woman over children. It's a spiritual thing. It's spiritual. Anyone that has anger is a murderer in their own heart. They're murdering themselves and they murder others. It's spiritual. And what you're doing to others is happening to you. You're not really doing it to them. You're just bringing it out or giving them a chance to see where they are, but you're really doing it to yourself. I want to encourage all people. And men, one, last thing, one other thing about the men. If you notice men, masculinity is under attack, not only by women, but by other men, because they have the female nature. They have the abnormal nature. And it's not even the female nature, it's the spirit of the evil that made a home in the female. Your mama passes this mess on to you. Don't let anyone convince you, and if they have already convinced you, overcome being convinced that anger is good. Anger is not good. Anger is evil. Anger causes you to become a murderer within your own self. Look at the next time anger arises from you, look at the impact it has on your physical body. I was counseling with someone, and they were angry at everybody around them. And when they spoke, their whole eyes would just stress out and, and frowns and faces and anger causes blood pressure. Uh, uh, it affects the cells in your body. It's affect your whole body. If anger was good, not only is it destroying your soul, it destroys the physical too. So if anger was good, why is it causing so much damage? The damage is not good. Anger is evil. It is destroying you. It's destroying your soul. It destroys your body and makes you want to destroy others. And you call it life. It's funny how, not funny in a good way, but interesting how anger will destroy your physical being and your soul, and then it makes you want to destroy others, and it, call, it makes you call it life. Anger is evil. I don't care what your race is. I counsel with people around the world. It's the same story. It's the same spirit. Why do you think so many women get breast cancer and all that mess? Because they're angry. It's destroying the body. The spirit of the devil made a home in them. They accepted it as the spirit of God. Or it's good, and it's destroying them. And then they make uh, fundraisers for their cancer. They tell the world, I got cancer. So you can feel sorry for them or feel something, then they feel okay about having a cancer. They worship the cancer, cancer, because now they got your attention. And they're being defeated and don't know it. Overcome evil with good. And it's weird, too. They call it being human. It's emotional. Being human, just being human. No, you're being destroyed. You're being evil. It's not being human, it's being evil. And they glorify their emotions. I just embrace my emotion. You're embracing the devil. And you're calling it good. One thing I can guarantee you 
without a doubt, anyone that has anger has fear inside. They have fear. They embrace loneliness. They embrace everything that's wrong, and they hate good. As Andreas was saying earlier, they accept the intellect, which is evil, and they reject wisdom, which is from God. And they call it being human. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to worship the devil anymore and calling him being human, being emotional, being logical. It's not. Next time you get angry, look in the mirror real fast to see what you're looking like. Or just be aware of your body movement. You'll see. It's like an earthquake coming through. In real love, there, there are no emotions. There are no stress on the body. There are no uh, anything. You're free. It's freedom. And you can deal with the issues because you're going to have issues in life. Evil dwells out there, right? So you're going to have issues, but you'll deal with it perfectly because the light is guiding you in dealing with it. It really, but you got to overcome the lie. The children of the lie controlling you outside of you, and the children of the lie is controlling you inside of you, inside of your mind. Anger is evil. It brings on heart attacks and all kinds of things. And you call it good because the world, you tell the world, you got, oh, I had a heart attack. Oh, let's do a fundraiser. Some people wonder, where was this country so amazing? Especially the blacks. Where was it so amazing? America was amazing at one point. And black people were not out of control for the most part. They were not. They weren't blaming the white man. They weren't destructive. They weren't taking and begging and blaming and whining and believing a lie that they are victims they used to be amazing. Remember when men were men? Grandpa would tell me about the good old days. And by the way, the hate report is coming up. I forgot to tell you. At the top of this hour, the hate, hnkareport.com from 9 to 11. And from at 12 noon, the Anchor Baby Show. Both Pacific time, 12 noon, the Anchor Baby Show at 12 noon Pacific time. Remember when men were men? Remember the good old days? I remember the good old days. I don't care what nobody else says. America has had some good old days. This is from Yahoo. Joe Greer, a Chicago-based man, has recently celebrated his 98th birthday as he continued to spend his life working seven days a week. Watch watch this from Fox. Joe Greer turned 98 and is still working seven days a week at Victory, one of the planter companies on Chicago's west side. Blow him out, Joe. Well, I'm happy there's only two. (laughs) Why do you still come to work every day? Well, it makes me feel good. And I'm able to associate myself with things that I've associated myself with for so long. It's a habit. (laughs) Joe is a craftsman making molds for trophies and awards. Working in the shiny industry that helps recognize achievements must have rubbed off on him. But his boss says it's the other way around. He's a mentor for everybody that works here. He's just somebody who has been here for so long, who teaches us everything, who has taught us everything. People must ask you all the time what the secret is. My secret is one thing, basically. I control my own thinking. Joe pours his positivity into everything precious. Joe's other secret to longevity, he doesn't call it work. He says he's going to the shop. He doesn't allow negative words into his vocabulary. And problems are opportunities. But how you look at them 
and how you deal with them. And they're no longer a problem. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Isn't that amazing? See, black people, it wasn't always the way y'all acting now. Black people dealt with life in the good old days. And this man working now in this generation, they don't want to work one job, not to mention two. They got to stay at home with mama so they can save some money and, and then move. Get two jobs. You don't have to be stuck at home with mama. And deal with life. Deal with the issues of life. Overcome them. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. That man is from the old school. He's not into the race thing. What the? A, a boss issue in life? It's not even real. Racism. Mind-blowing. Men were men, boys were boys, and men were men. Here's one more quick example of the good old days when men were men from the National Review. Canadian comic Norman MacDonald had been suffered from cancer for nine years but never went public with the information. Watch this compilation. I had no idea that Norm had not only been very ill, but been very ill for a very long time. Yeah. And, you know, he, he was a private person. Yeah, I didn't know he was sick at all. It's sad. This one. I didn't have no idea he was even sick. I, I didn't know he was even sick. You know, I had no idea that he was even sick. Did you know he was sick? No. Uh, like I saw a one woman show once by a woman. Mm-hmm. And, just one? Uh, yeah, the only okay, one. <laughs> and uh, she was like, well, my mother had breast cancer, you know, and, <laughs> and now I have breast cancer. And I'm like, well, it's everybody. Like, they think it's so special when everyone gets cancer and dies. <laughs> Like that's not great. What if we just ended the podcast? <laughs> but the, you know, the, the, it's almost like uh, the height of narcissism to think that you're uh, you're going to um, you know you're going to be so brave as to uh, talk about it in person, right? Whereas all you're doing is just garnering sympathy for yourself. I guess that's true. How is that brave? It seems cowardly to me. I had, and if I had a specific ailment, and possibly I do, you don't know. I don't don't know. Uh, But I would not talk about it. I would not, uh, I hope that I would not discuss it. And And these people run around, I got this, I got cancer, I'm this. They're losers. They're on an ego trip. They want you to celebrate their misery with them. And, and he's right. They ain't doing no battle. They're absolute losers. And men used to not go around telling things like that. It was a woman's thing to do. Even in the good old days, women did not even do that, for the most part, that I'm aware of. But women are doing that now, complaining and putting all everything out there for false sympathy. And the men are doing it too, following the woman. Men didn't go around telling their stuff out there like that, like women do. On an ego trip. Feeling good about sharing it with the world. Because now the world got your attention. And anything for a little attention, ego. Ego. That's all it is. It's what they call narcissistic. It's ego. Is evil. And you look for anything to bring you pleasure. And every time the woman, every time you listen to the woman, you suffer. The men out there, oh, I got this and I got that. Whining like a woman. And they, and they and now they have a battle going on and they need to do a fundraiser. Man, that's deep. Men used to have dignity. Where is that? 
They didn't accept help, and they didn't put their business out there. But the men have the mindset and the emotion of the woman, and they're listening to her, acting just like her. That is so deep. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. And see, y'all young folks, because they have rewritten history, they have lied to you about history. And now you're a little cowards going through life. Softies going through life. Suffering through life unnecessarily. You're losing with cancer if you're out there telling everyone like that. People go on TV, oh, I got cancer. And go sit down and shut up and deal with life. It's the right way to live and a wrong way. If you're in your thoughts, and most people are, if you're in your emotions, and most people are, it's the wrong way. And the world has convinced you it's the right way, and now you're suffering. There are a few people who is starting to see, uh uh-uh, this ain't working. It has to be something better. And they're overcoming. Men and women. You should visit our women's forum. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. The ladies are on fire. They're looking at themselves and they're overcoming. They're forgiving. And go and forgive mama. Forgive daddy. Return to the father. And their lives start to open up. And they're dropping the anger. One last quick example of when men were men, boys were boys and men were men. Men, you are needed. But ladies, it's going to be a while before these men, a lot of these men overcome. You can go around it if you're not married. Go and forgive your mamas, return to your fathers, and the rest is history. Return to manhood. Masculinity is okay. It's okay to be a man. Only the devil and his children hate masculinity. God love it. He loves it. Amazing! And the way you return... To the Father, there will come a day when I return the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. The way you return is by forgiving. I'm sorry I was wrong for judging you. I've been playing God and catching hell as a result. I'm wrong. And you'll be fine. You really, really will. And then not you will disappear, and the real you will appear. The not you is preventing the real you from appearing. You're never going to know the real you until you unlearn the not you. It's not you. It's a thing that made a home in you. It's a thing that made a home in you. As Norm McDonald just said, in the old school, Men were just men living their life. They didn't do like the woman go on TV and talk about how pitiful they were. Real love is dispassionate love. It's conscious love. There's no emotions attached to it. 